Okay guys, we're gonna put the hole through the centre now, so I'm gonna centre drill and I'm gonna try my luck and follow that straight through with this. I don't know where I picked this up but I've had it for many many years and it's brand new so it's a Goering drill which is um, a German brand uh, incredibly good quality high speed steel drill but it's got a flute length long enough to get right the way through um, in one go so I'm going to go straight for that I think from the centre drill we'll, or at least we'll give it a try without putting anything any smaller through first I'm a little bit short on drills to be honest um, I've managed to look this out which is a um, a 5 8 diameter um, drill with a two Morse taper on the back. I've just cleaned the taper up. This was absolutely red rusty, and the end of it was all completely uh, it was terrible really. That end. So I've just given that a quick grind up um, on the off hand grinder. Um, so we'll stick that through, hopefully all the way through, and then I should be able to get my boring bar in after that and do the rest with the boring bar. So we'll try that um, and see how we get on and if we struggle then we're going to have to go down to a smaller pilot drill but we'll give it a go. a decent size um, centre drill hole in just to try and give this 12mm uh, drill a fighting chance this has been uh, this drill has been in my possession for about 20 years in this box um, I can't remember where I found it it was in a skip somewhere I think I've got two of them they're being thrown out from somewhere. But certainly good quality anyway. Right, I think we'll slow things down a bit for this. Um, what will we on there? 800. Let's try. 514 see how we get on that might be too fast like I say I think this is stainless so we'll see how that goes we might have to slow it down a bit
through. So it's waited uh, 20 odd years to get used and uh, it's just had quite a hard time for its uh, maiden, maiden voids that drill. And it's done the job well. So we'll set this this drill up. I'm not quite sure how well this is going to go. This Morse tape is not the best on this. This is horrible. I'm just going to tickle. I'm just going to tickle that drill up. It's not really, despite all the protesting and squealing, it's not really done anything to that, other than dulled the edge slightly. I'll, I'll just go and tickle it up a bit. But I think this is. Uh, I think this is work hardening. Probably got about another 25 30 mil to go. I'll just go and touch this drill up and we'll give it another go. Right, we'll just touch that drill up, we'll try again. Well that was hard work. This is the problem when you're machining unknownium. You don't know what it is, where it's been, whether it's got hard spots in it. It's very very strangely behaving that. It's not, you know when you deal with a, a material that work hardens Normally, if you work hard on the surface, your drill just won't cut anything at all when you go back in. And when you have work hardened it, once you get under that work hardened surface and start cutting again, 
as long as you keep the pressure on and you don't let it get too hot um, it's okay but if you look at that drill that doesn't look like a drill that's been cut in hardened material I mean it, it's got warm but it hasn't you know it, it doesn't it sounds hard but that wouldn't suggest to me that that material's rock hard um, very very strange material this it's, uh, it's certainly a mystery, mystery material it's magnetic it doesn't rust it won't take a chemical black on it I can't get it to chip the swarf looks like stainless when you when you turn it and we've just had to endure 20 minutes of uh, eardrum smashing putting a hole through the middle of it anyway a hole through the middle of it we've got so hopefully from now on I can revert to a carbide boring bar um, and we'll see how that behaves I mean it's it's warm but it's not you know I've got a good hold of that it's probably only 45 50 degrees maybe something like that it's not it's not burning hot every day's a school day um, we'll get the boring bar set up and we'll start boring out the I'm gonna bore the counter bore out of the front first and get that to full depth um, because that reduces the amount of boring I've got to do then through the center um, that's gonna be the difficult bit of this job I think judging by what we've just uh, been through with the drill. So I'll bring you back when we're doing that. getting a bit warm you get the idea I'll keep going with that until we get somewhere near finished size and then I'll bring you back when we're doing the final final cuts right guys we're getting somewhere near size now I've just let that cool back down that's cool so we'll see where we're at we're going to use snap gauges all I've got. So we're aiming for 1.575 which is 40 millimeters. And that's nowhere near where I thought it was. So that's that gauge has moved. These are new snap gauges that I bought and they're cheap and cheerful ones from I, uh, Arc Euro Trade or I can't remember one of those places um, so they're going to take a little bit of getting used to with these to be honest I have used these many years ago in the past but I was using Starrett I think they were Starrett or more and right I can't remember I think they were Starrett gauges Just 
try that again. That's more like where I thought it was, based on the cuts I've been uh, putting on. We're pretty much 1.530 and we need to get out to 1.575. should really do is change this into Imperial, it will make life easier. I'm 1.555 there now. What I'm going to do just to double check that my snap gauges are in the ballpark. Yeah, 1.554 with the vernier, so we're in the right area. So I'm going to take two, I've got 20 thou to come out. I'm going to do two 10 thou cuts. Point five sixty five. So we should go straight for a ten power cut, and that should be us on our finished ball size. Balance cut, balance cut approach again. I've got my feed and speed set so that I was getting a decent finish, and uh, worked out that ten thou cut was, um, you know, holding that true each time. So hopefully, Imagine we should be uh, same, same slightly plus. I'm just going to check that again. What I'm finding with these gauges is they're a bit I think I'm going to strip these down. I watched um, I think it was this old Tony and he did a, he bought a cheap set and he stripped them down because they were giving him inconsistent readings and the um, usual thing 
Badly finished. Inside, burrs everywhere. Yeah, so 1.575 is what we're aiming for. Is the camera going to focus? So you can see we're just slightly plus on 1.575 by a couple of tenths. And I want it to be nominal to plus, so hopefully that's the fine limit ball finished. So what we're going to do now is just finish the drop on that. We'll do that off camera, nothing special. I'm just going to take a couple of facing cuts off the back face. Um, and then that's the critical ball finished. Then I need to stand my boring bar out a long way. Um, and I'm not quite sure how well that's going to cut um, to finish the 20 mil bore off through the through the through the rest of the part. So I'll bring you back when we're uh, when we're attempting to do that. Right, guys, we're um, we're boring out the the main bore now all the way through. You can see there, I've got it's not ideal at all. I've got a hundred mil stick out there, and the part's a hundred mil long, so I'm, I'm right on the limit of um, of the part there. It's really not ideal, um, but because I've got this counter bore in the front, I've got a packing piece set under the boring bar that's sticking out about 18 millimeters roughly, because I know that this counter bore is 20 mil deep, so I'm supporting it uh, underneath by that. So in in real terms, I've got just over 80 millimeters of uh, unsupported boring bar. Absolutely not ideal, but um, it's. Uh, I've put a couple of cuts down, the first two were quite noisy. I think from the drilling um, there was some case hardened surface in there. Um, but we've got rid of that now so we're just taking some small cuts. So I'll show you a couple of those as I'm working out towards my finished size. That's cutting okay, it's it's vibrating a little bit, but you'd expect that with the boring bar stuck out that far. Um but it's going uh, it's going okay. And what I'm using again tiny little um snap gauge and I'm and, and the size I'm aiming for is between this snap gauge and the next one up. This one goes up to 19 millimeters and then the next one up goes from 19 onwards. Same as before, I'm just using a vernier for now, so we get closer. So on about 18.2 there. I mean. So you get the idea, I'll, um, I'll bring you back when we get near finished size. So according to the last measurement I've taken, I've 10 thou left to come out. And, and I've been taking um, 10 thou cuts. Um, so Every time I've taken a tenth hour cut, it's actually cut off what I've um, what I've put on, which is good. I've tried best I can to measure down at the back end of the bore with the snap gauge, 
And funnily enough, I was expecting to have had some taper and I'm sure there will be some taper in there, but I can't measure it with that snap gauge. Now, whether that's just the quality of the snap gauge and the depth I'm measuring at, I don't know, but we'll put the 10th hour cut on. Um, we'll try and measure it with the snap gauge again and then we'll offer up the arbor to it and just see how that fits. See a decent finish in there, despite the uh, despite the noise. Well, decent. It's not a bad finish. It's certainly a lot better than it sounds. Okay, let's see what we've got. I'm looking for seven seven point seven 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 and a couple of tenths. Point seven 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 and a couple of tenths. So at the front of the bore, it's where it should be. We'll just see if we can get a measurement further down. It's really hard to do down there. The um, best I can do with the snap gauge, we're on 777 and a couple of tenths again, so I really, really don't believe that that's got no taper in it whatsoever. <laughs> so we will bring in the arbor and just see if it fits in. I think we're going to need to take a, another couple of. Uh, spring cups potentially yeah there's taper there's taper with that definitely but that's a that's a really good fit so that's good because that means all the numbers have added up correctly Not bad, that's halfway down. Okay, we'll take a we'll touch on and take a spring pass. This is where it can all go wrong. That's really close. I'm going to do that one more time, another spring pass like that, and I think we'll call that done.
Well, I'm happy with that. That's a really good fit. Um, which is what I wanted. Perfect, I think. We'll see what it's like running. Um, but that's kind of the fit I wanted. And as the old saying goes, I can always take a little bit more out. It's very, very difficult to put some material back in there. So we'll leave that as it is. So the next tool I'm going to set up, um, I'll have to look at a bit of high speed steel, a bit of small bit of high speed steel just to put um, uh, a nice break edge on the front here. And then I think I've got a countersink big enough to go and countersink that, uh, that 20 mil bore inside there. So we'll just break those two edges. Okay guys, I've put a bit of high speed steel in. It's it's a tool that I was using for screw cutting years ago, so it's 60 degrees. I've slewed it round to get it somewhere near 45, so we're just going to deburr this inside edge. And then I've got a countersink ready to deburr the hole in the front. So we'll just do that now. nicely broken those edges so the next job now I thought that was it for the machining of this but it's not because I want to put the knurl on here so I'm just going to set the knurl up I'll switch this round we'll hold on this diameter and we'll put the diamond knurl on this outer diameter guys we're just going to knurl this now so I've set the diamond knurls up and we'll give this a go I don't know how successful it's going to be because I think we've deduced that this is stainless and these nails are cheap and cheerful but we'll give it a go and see what happens so we're about on the centre line there what I've done I know on my drawing I've shown a 30mm band of nail equally spaced about this, um, this, this length but what I've done, I've gone 20 millimetres in from this end, which would equally space it. But rather than being 20 mil in from that end, I've gone a bit further. Because I've just got a bit of a mark on that OD, just from Swarf. It's only cosmetic. So I'm going to go up to that mark, um, just to try and remove that mark out of the OD while I'm at it. It really doesn't matter.
I've just I've, I've checked the nails out and they were right. I was wondering whether I'd got the wheels the wrong way round, um, but I've I've checked them and they're fine. I've gone back in. I've run back down it again, uh, the same as I did before. I mean, it's nailed it, but it's there's. I think I'm fighting two or three things with this. The first thing I'm fighting is this knurling tool is a, you know, it's a bloody, excuse my language, it's a cheap import thing and it's just, it's probably alright for brass and aluminium and things like that that's on small diameters, but stainless on this diameter is probably a bit of an ask for it, if I'm honest, looking at how, um, I mean it's meant to articulate this way, which it does, but it also articulates that way pretty badly as well it's just not made particularly well so I'm fighting that also when you're knurling there is a calculation that you're supposed to do in terms of the pitch of your knurl the diameter that you're knurling on and, and you, you're supposed to match your knurls to your diameter and if you don't you get a little bit like what I've got there which is where it's sort of half pitching I think that's half pitching, which is giving some of that effect. But I think most of the effect I've got on there is the fact that it's not the minute you get engage it because this is so baggy, it's pulling the knurls off centre and they're not they're not knurling true to the surface. Um, so there's a couple of things at play, and also you know we think we've established this is stainless, so it's it's a it's a tough test for it. I'm not going to mess around with that anymore. It's not as pretty as I would like it to be, but it's functional. It's you know it's got a decent. There's a decent grip on there now. It'll do the job. Um, so I think I'm going to call that a day. So in terms of um, in terms of this piece, the jigsaw puzzle. That's now the machining on that's now complete. So we've got we've got it counterboard at the front for the cartridges to fit into. We've got it nailed. We've got it bored all the way through to fit onto the um, onto the arbor. So that's kind of the end of this this piece of the puzzle. Um, there is some milling work to do on this. I've got to drill the retention hole in the back, and I've got to drill um, and tap a hole here to hold the cartridges in. I'll probably build that into the next episode when I'm making the smaller smaller pieces that need to uh, that need to go along with this set. So we'll call that the end of this episode. So th thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing uh, as always. Um, if you've not subscribed, please do because it helps the channel. Um, I hope you're enjoying the uh, the project, and um, we'll catch you very shortly on the next episode uh, when we're making the remaining pieces for the tailstock die holder.